taking a look here, if we have 300 kilogram ball and a 30 kilogram ball falling from the same height on Earth, which one hits the ground first? Again, if they're only affected by gravity, then their mass does not matter. All right, so their mass in free fall does not matter, all right? Doesn't matter how heavy or how light you are, just like our feather and our bowling ball, it didn't matter how heavy or light they were when they were in the vacuum and there was no air resistance. If they're only affected by acceleration of gravity, the rate of gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared, which means they'll speed up at the exact same rate, which means that they will hit at the exact same time. So the correct answer here is they hit at the same time. Again, mass does not matter in free fall as long as there are no other forces like air resistance, right? We saw air resistance does affect feathers, but if you get rid of air resistance, the feather and the bowling ball hit at the same exact time. Go ahead, give me a smiley face or an emoji in the chat box if that correction makes sense. Smiley face emojis in the chat if that correction makes sense. Thank you, Mallory. Thank you, Cody. Thank you, Angelina. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to go ahead and send out the links to your notes for today. Again, um, you can get notes credit at any time, but if you also want attendance, make sure that you do your notes during class and that you pass them. All right, so if you want notes and attendance, not just notes credit, make sure that you do them during class and you pass them. So there's my version. Here's Mr. Bangle's version. Make sure you let me know if they're not working for some reason. If you want to start raising your hand because you already have them open, that's great. We will ask for 100% raised hands in just a few slides. Let's go ahead and jump into our announcements. All right. So hello, guys. Good morning. Uh, just a couple of disclaimers, as always. Please do not share any personal information during class. Your participation is vital. And these Class Connect sessions are always recorded for educational purposes. All right, guys, so we are in uh, week five of 13, so we're almost about halfway through the semester, moving right along. And today, we're going to be learning about momentum. So momentum, uh, uh, let's look at that um, in more detail here, what we're going to learn about, but we're almost toward the end of unit two. All right, so we will, able, we will be able today to learn how to define momentum. We're going to explain how mass affects the momentum of objects and explain how velocity, um, okay, that was written, oh, and explain how the velocity affects the momentum of objects. So, uh, and hopefully by the end, we should be able uh, to do pretty well on our notes by the end of class. So let's go ahead and raise our hands for the notes. Again, the links are still in the chat. Sorry, yes, go ahead and raise those hands, waiting on Tim, 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 Kamal, Kamal, Jalen, Jalen, Kai, 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 Joseph H., Noah, Noah, Kali, Kali, Kalina, Kalina, and Jaime, Jaime. Go ahead and raise your hands. Once you have your notes open and ready to go, I'll go ahead and give you another 20 seconds. All right, so what I want to think us to think about today is in the chat box, if you had to, would you rather get hit by a 100 mile per hour baseball or a one mile per hour baseball? Go ahead and tell me in the chat and tell me why. If you had to be hit by a baseball that's moving at 100 miles per hour or one mile per hour, which would you prefer and why? Which one would you prefer and why? <laughs> awesome, I see an answer from Angelina. Let's get some more opinions in the chat. Tell me which would you prefer and why? Even if you have the same answer as someone else, you should still respond for your own participation purposes. Awesome, I see Cody, excellent, excellent. Already throwing in some vocab from today, I love it. Let's get some more answers in the chat. Thank you, Mallory, thank you, Jonathan. Yes, exactly. So if you get hit by a baseball that's moving at one mile per hour, it's probably not going to hurt very much, right? So this one, um, you would definitely prefer to be hit by a one mile per hour baseball. It's not moving fast, not moving fast, so it doesn't really hurt. All right, now on the other hand, let's think about this, all right? If you had to, would you rather be hit by a two mile per hour semi truck or a two mile per hour car? And again, tell me why. Which would you prefer if you had to? Okay, not saying that you should get hit by a semi truck or a car, but if you had to choose, which one would you prefer? <laughs> Either way, you're suing. I hear that. <laughs> All right, so I'm seeing people saying two mile per hour car. I agree, but why? Why would we rather be hit by a car that's moving at two miles per hour than a semi truck? What's the difference between a car and a semi truck? What's the difference between a car and a semi truck? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Mallory. So the car is much smaller much smaller, has less mass. Let's throw in some vocabulary. So what we're seeing here is that in terms of the things that hurt us less, 
right? If they hit us. Things that move slow hurt less and things that are light or have less mass hurt less. So this is gonna be important for our lesson in momentum today. Go ahead and give me a smiley or an emoji in the chat box if this brainstorm is starting to make sense. Again, we're gonna actually apply this to our concepts today. You already know a lot about science. We just need to add some vocabulary to it. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about momentum. As we kind of already know, right? We would rather be hit by something that's either moving very, very slow relative to something else or something that is very, very small in terms of mass. So momentum in this respect then can be defined as mass in motion. Um, to change a, uh, a moving object's motion, you must overcome its momentum. More mass equals more difficult to change its motion, which means it's more momentum. Less mass means it's less difficult to change its motion, and which means it's less, it has less momentum. So we will be using this formula through the rest of the lesson day. It is uh, P, which is uh, stands for momentum, equals M times V, which is, as we already learned, mass and velocity respectively. So if in a problem we're given a mass and a velocity, all we need to do is multiply them together to get our momentum which will have just the units as seen down below here, just kilogram meter per second. So for number two in your notes, mark the word change. Yeah, go ahead and mark the word change for number two. Raise your hands when you are ready. I'll set a timer for us and then we will move on. All right, so taking a look here, momentum increases as mass increases. We saw this at the beginning, right? Less mass, a lighter thing like a car, has less momentum, so it doesn't hurt as much. On the other hand, if you increase the mass, you're definitely going to increase the momentum. A truck or a bus has a lot of momentum because it's very, very heavy. It is a lot harder to change the motion of a heavy object, right? So if a heavy object is coming towards you, it's going to be harder to change. So taking a look here, you can see a bus can have large momentum even if it's moving pretty slowly, because it has a large mass. You can see that here, the bigger your mass, the bigger your momentum, all right? Based on our equation, mass times velocity equals momentum. Same thing over here, though. If your velocity increases, just like our really, really fast baseball, it's a lot harder to change the motion of that fast baseball. So it has a lot of momentum. It's going to be very ouchy, right? So taking a look here, an example here is a bullet. Even though it has a small mass, because its velocity is so large, it actually still has a large momentum, which makes it very painful, right? So again, increasing mass or increasing velocity increases momentum makes it harder to change its motion thank you for letting us know noah Awesome. All right, so this is the answer for number three and number four. Fill in the number three with the word mass. Make sure you spell it correctly. And fill in number four with the word velocity. Make sure you spell it correctly. You have 20 seconds to get that done and raise your hand. All right, so let's go ahead and actually practice using this equation of momentum equals mass times velocity. So the question is, what is the momentum of a five kilogram bowling ball that is moving three meters per second? So taking a look here in the chat, tell me five kilograms is that the momentum, mass, or velocity. Again, take a look here. We're talking about kilograms. I have the units listed over here as well. So which of those is related to momentum, mass, or velocity? When we're talking about kilograms, is that momentum, mass, or velocity? Tell me in the chat. Okay, no worries, Joseph H. We can go back to it after class. Everyone else, please make sure you don't put answers in the chat because I want everyone to actually see the slides if they miss something. All right, taking a look here. Yeah, so kilograms, right, right here is related to mass. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in here. So five kilograms is our mass. What about three meters per second? Is that our momentum or our velocity? So momentum units are kilogram meters per second, velocity meters per second. So three meters per second, is that a momentum or a velocity? Take a look at our chart over here and tell me in the chat. Thank you, I see Lexi, I see Angelina. Let's get some more participation. Awesome, yeah, this is going to be our velocity, excellent. Thank you for all of you who are participating. Meters per second is a measurement for velocity. So that means what's left over, what are we solving for, or you can see what the question is asking. What is the, what, what are we solving for? Yes, exactly, we are going to be solving for momentum. So let's go ahead and start plugging these in. So now that we've annotated this, let's go ahead and actually start plugging in our numbers. So under our mass of our bowling ball, so momentum P, equals mass times velocity, what number should I plug in for my mass? Okay, based on what we annotated, what number goes in for my mass? Take a look up here. What number did we decide was our mass? Five kilograms, three meters per second. 
which one, which one. Yes, excellent. I see Mallory, Cody, Lexi, Angelina on top of it. Yeah, so five kilograms times our velocity here. What is our velocity of our um, bowling ball? Again, taking a look at our annotations here. Yes, exactly. I see Lexi. I see Mallory. Let's get some more answers. Thank you, Angelina. Let's get Seraphim participating. Let's get Jalen and Cody in the chat. Kamal, Alicia. Um, let's get Noah in the chat. Thank you, Lena. Yeah, exactly. Three meters per second. We annotated that. Now, this is mental math, but if you need to, you can always check with the calculator. You will need a calculator for the next one, probably. So go ahead and tell me what is five times three. What is our momentum of our bowling ball? Five times three. What does that equal? Thank you, Mallory, on top of it. Seraphim, Jonathan, Itati, love that participation. Working fast, too. Yeah, this is going to be 15, and units, we just learned, so I'm going to reiterate those, are kilograms meters per second. So the way that you pronounce this is kilograms, sorry, kilogram meters per second. That's how we pronounce that. In your notes, all right, the first box should be the number 15, and the second box should be kilograms with a star, meters slash seconds. Okay, kilograms with a star, star is shift eight. So kilograms, star, meters per second. Kg, star, meters per second. Make sure you get that in for number 15. Raise your hands, you have 30 seconds to get that done. In a slightly different situation, uh, we're looking at what is the momentum of a 0.4 kilogram soccer ball that is moving at three meters per second. All right, so in the chat, tell me 0.4 kilograms, what is that? What variable is that for our for our equation? The mass. So let me write that in there. So it is the mass. All right. Now in the chat for three the three meters per second, what variable would that be in our equation for momentum? Maybe a couple more people can tell me what is our three meters per second? Angelina, thank you very much. And Cody, yes, it is the velocity. So it is how fast this object is moving. All right, so uh, just as always, where are we solving for? We have mass and velocity, where are we solving for? Yes, four. thank you, Lexi, Angelina. All right, momentum. What should we put into each blank? So what do we put in our first blank right here in our equation? Do we put three in the mass uh, blank? We put 0.43 for our mass. Annotated what we we're looking for, but yeah, that term, but yeah, Lexi, you're you're good. So our mass of the soccer ball is 0.4 kilograms. Uh, I should have a zero with it, kilograms. And our velocity is going to be what? What's our velocity? Three meters per second. I'll type some answers in the chat. What should what number should we get uh, with the units kilogram per or kilogram meter per second if we're multiplying 0.4 with three? It's going to be 1.2, but it's 1.2, make sure your units are correct, 1.2 kilogram star meter per second. Your first box is going to be 1.2, second box, like uh, we did last time, is going to be kilogram star meter slash second. All right, just, just like uh, Mrs. Larkin typed for us in the chat. All right, and again, the way you get that little asterisk or that little star symbol is by pressing shift eight. All right, so here's the deal. We had two different balls, a soccer ball and a bowling ball, and we did their calculations, and they were both moving at the same speed. However, they did have different masses. So take a look at your answers. The bowling ball had a momentum of 15 kilogram meters per second. The soccer ball had a momentum of 1.2 kilogram meters per second. And go ahead and circle on the board which one had more momentum and why. Take a look at which one had more momentum, and then we'll talk about why. Okay, so which one had more momentum and why? The bowling ball, the soccer ball, or were they the same? Exactly. So taking a look here, you could definitely see that our bowling ball definitely has more momentum, right? 15 is a much larger number than 1.2. So it does have more momentum. And again, the reason why is because it is heavier. So in this case, you didn't necessarily need to know the reason why. You just need to be able to analyze your calculations. But we should still talk about the reason why. The reason why is because it has more mass. It is heavier. So again, think about if a bowling ball or a soccer ball is being thrown at you, which one hurts more? Tell me in the chat. If a bowling ball and a soccer ball, even if they're moving at the same speed, which one hurts more, the bowling ball or the soccer ball? 
The one that hurts more should have more momentum. Tell me in the chat. Yes, exactly. I see Mallory working in the chat. Which one hurts more? Which one hurts more? Yeah, the bowling ball for sure. Exactly. So anytime we have something that's heavier, right, even if they're moving at the same speed, heavier things hurt more. All right. This is also true for velocity, right? So keep that in mind. Anytime we increase mass or velocity, we're going to be increasing momentum. Thinking about that fast bullet or that fast baseball, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. This is going to be the answer to number seven. Please raise your hands for number seven. You have 20 seconds to go ahead and raise your hands. Go, go, go. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example. So we have a 60 kilogram. Sorry, this is a complete on your own. So please don't put answers in the chat. We have a 60 kilogram running back moving slowly at 1.8 meters per second. Then that same 60 kilogram running back moves quickly at, at 3.6 meters per second. So this time we want to know in which scenario does the running back have more momentum and why. Now you'll notice I already did the calculations for you down here, right? So in both cases, their mass was the same. So in both cases, we plugged in 60 kilograms for their mass. However, their velocities were different, right? So we had a slow running back and then we had a fast running back. So you want to take a look at those results and analyze them and also think about in which scenarios do we have more momentum? Think about what has to happen to mass or velocity in order to have more momentum. That should also help you with number eight. All right, but again, you can analyze the results or just think through, right, which one hurts more, a running back moving at you slowly or a running back moving at you quickly. Go ahead and answer number eight and then raise your hands. Again, this is a complete on your own, but if you need help, we're in the Q&A area. You have 30 seconds to go ahead and raise your hands. Uh, simply put, momentum is just uh, a way of describing how mass and velocity interact with each other, right? Uh, easy way to remember it is always that, hey, whatever hurts more if it hits you, that's going to have more momentum, whether it has more speed, velocity, or if it's just heavier, right, having more mass. Your notes, if you have already, uh, go ahead and tell us uh, if you'd like to what score you got so you can uh, be proud of yourself and so we can shout you out. If there's anyone that uh, needs to stay behind for any questions or things that they missed, feel free to stay behind for a little bit. Everyone else, have a great day, and we will see you guys tomorrow.